Hey everybody, we are back for the second entry in our little designer sharing, what, what is this? Our series. It's a series. That's right. It's a series. <laughs> so this time we are going to talk about ooh, the world of Forsaken. The crazy, the giant, the, the backdrop, the details, the people, the places, the plants. Yes. Even the plants. Sure. Yeah. All right, there you go. Make quiet. You're going to talk. <laughs> right. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> no, this world is it's, it's huge and weird and wild and, and, and crazy. Um, it's come from some strange, dark place in Travis's mind, and we, we really wanted to bring something like super narrative and super deep to this to the table here, right? So we wanted to build a world um, that uh, that was had a, a huge scope, but also fit in one session in one box, right? So this is Theria here, if you look at the table. This is like the middle planet. This is a, a planet that's like on the edge of the galaxy, and uh, this is a planet that like has, has been around for a while. Um, this, uh, this interstellar faction called the Imperiad came out here, and they started to sort of uh, to sort of mine its resources here. There was a big gold rush. They terraformed both of its moons, so these are both now inhabitable worlds, and they use them for different things. Uh, they brought all this workforce out there, and then over the course of hundreds and hundreds of years, they kind of strip mined this planet and took everything that was that was there, right? Um, at the end, so, you know, there's the events of the game, and then, like, ten years before that, this Imperiad, they're like, you know what, we're, we're, it's not cost-effective anymore, we're done with, uh, with all this mining, there's not a lot to get here, so they just left. And they left a lot of the workforce, a lot of the equipment, a lot of the scrap, and just all this stuff, and they just took out, right? And this is, like, a, a world where, like, uh, interstellar travel is, like, really expensive, it takes forever, so it's not something that's very common, and we have this world that's basically been forsaken, right? That's the picture one. Oh my gosh! Yes, we got it in there! And, uh, so, like, there's, there's, uh, this, all, all these people that have been left behind, uh, all these refugees, this workforce, there's also, like, the local and native ecologies of each of these worlds that are kind of coming back to life, and, uh, and it just gets weird. There's like this power vacuum that is starting to get filled by the factions that are rising up around here. So why don't you tell us more about that? Like what's what is filling this world? Like what can you expect to see out there? Anything. As you play. Everything. Right. <laughs> yeah, everything. It was, it was made specifically so it would. Yeah, I mean, so like when we started with this, um, and, I, and I think like, you know, it's important to understand like the distribution of labor here is usually concept. Concept, I'll say what if. And then he's the detail guy. So a lot of these ideas started with suggestions that I made, but Mike went in and, and like really fleshed them out. And I, I'm super grateful for that because I don't think I could have done as good of a job as him. Uh, so it, it, in particular in this world, what we have is, is like you said, it's kind of like a melting pot. It's like a, it's a bunch of uh, it's a bunch of people and things that wouldn't normally be interacting with one another, and then they're kind of just like left in this mm. random you know situation that's that's not ideal. And, and, and a world is kind of uh, coalescing out of that uh, situation. So what's, what's even more interesting, I think, is that we have these characters who are, are almost every single character is a person who has come to this place. Everyone else wants to leave, but all the characters have come here for a reason, right? So they've come to, they, they have came, come? They have come? They sure. have came? They have arrived in this world. The less we talk about, the better. <laughs> yes. So, so they've decided that the theory is the place that the this this story that they uh, this this goal of theirs. This is the place where it's all going to take. Uh, you know, the the action is going to happen. Like this is where it's all going to kind of pan out. So, I think that's an interesting idea where, where you have the tension of like everyone else wants to leave pretty much, and then you're a person who who decided to come to the the. Kind of like the worst place imaginable, like like the the, right. the, the furthest place imaginable, you know. Um, within the within the world, we, we we do have some like factions. So uh, one thing I like to do whenever I do concepting on stuff is I, I like to just drop like tons of love letters into things. Uh, so we, we've got the, the three factions, each little planet, if you will, even though they're moons, we call them planet in terms of the game. We have on the main one we have sanction. So sanction is kind of like my love letter to Robocop. Judge Dredd, the comic book martial law. It's like this hyper militant police force, but also like they're trying to like, they're trying to, to, to create a sense of, of order and law within a really lawless place. And in order to do that, when you, you think about it, imagine like living just like the worst, like Mad Maxian type world. These guys have to be even tougher in order to try to find that like balance between chaos and order, right? Yeah, all the, all the encounters with Sanction, they're like, they're terrifying. Yeah, yeah, like the worst, like 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 the worst situation. Like, well, yeah. So th they want to be good guys, but they're they're not necessarily going about it the right way. So then we have the cartel, who are kind of like my the way I envisioned them was that they're like the CD criminals, kind of like Job of the Hut, um, Bib Fortuna, 
uh, the Tatooine um, kind of uh, uh, criminal element, like the, the the scum and villainy element. Mm. I don't but think anybody knows who Big Fortuna is. I think <laughs> he's that dude with like the gross tail pony, like like pony <laughs> tail on all caps. Um, so, the, but but my the way I envision them was like. Like violence is a measure, but like they just kind of rather avoid that and like talk through things or pay for things, and and they're like the only people who can kind of get in and off world, and they won't really share why, right? Mm. And then the last faction is my love letter to Dune, like one of my very favorite things in the entire universe, and it's the 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 Ebon Eye, and the Ebon Eye is um, we we have a lot of we have a lot of like uh, suggestions that the the Imperial kind of just like. Uh, engineer things for purposes and then they just kind of like abandon them like so like they'll make something like a tool and those tools sometimes are are beings like they're actual like you know alien species or, or animals and things like that and then they use them and then they abandon them so the idea is the Eb and I were kind of like uh, risk assessment forecasters and they could kind of like see into the future they could kind of understand and, and comprehend stuff a little differently and then they were left here and then they've just become this like cult like this, like you know, prognosticating cult uh, that has turned their eyes to the the black of space <laughs> and are looking for answers in really weird places. Yeah. Um, for me, like the the Ebonai, like it, the Ebonai, the passages that mention the Ebonai, because we have a lot of writing and stuff in the game. Those those passages feel like fantasy to me, and then like the each of these different worlds has its almost like its own tone and genre and like it just it just makes for a, a world where anything happens like you said yeah i try i try to even think of like a little bit of like um uh from from the perspective of each faction so in order to be a part of sanction anyone could be sanctioned right but but it, they only pick from very few cartel you just have to want to be a part of it and work your way up the m and i like you have to be what they are in order to be a part of it like they're they are like essentially a race of people right so so th those those are like kind of the factions that are, are they're operating within the worlds and then there's the actual like ecology and the the fauna and, and the, the the different things that are going on like each planet is kind of different like so mike why don't you tell us about each of the little planet in our <laughs> moonoids and how those things play into the game i'm gonna that's my favorite word moonoid uh, so yeah, the, the Mycenaean Verge is like this this bungalow jungle of a sort. We keep oh, coming back to. <laughs> uh, it's like this this weird world where um, there's this organism called a fungalite, and this is something that's like a byproduct of the terraforming process, right? <laughs> that that little token, it's a bit in the game, it's real. Uh, but like this byproduct of the terraforming process has kind of evolved out of this, and now it's this like super infectious thing that can currently you know in this, as the I don't want to spoil too much. No spoil. At, at the uh, the start of the game, it can infect just about you know whatever organic matter is is around but there are also chances that it can kind of evolve and make the leap to other things including things you wouldn't think were infectable yeah so like it's just this weird world with a bunch of mushrooms i guess right and then the, then these psychic prophets and stuff uh theria is like this is our our our, our wasteland it's been strip mined uh it's there's just huge you know mesas and, and plateaus and just uh canyons all over the place um we have just big you know dragons and you know, weird beasts out in the, the, the wasteland and uh, you have uh, a lot of the population here is just like refugees and settlers that were left behind by the Imperiad, right? So we have like all kinds of different like like peoples and, and kind of groups um, that are uh, that are just kind of trying to make their way on this world. So this okay. is like this is our super western feeling. Sure, exactly. Like yeah. this is our nod to like like this notion of like a boom town. A bunch of people who wouldn't normally right. They've all been driven to a place for a reason, and they're not necessarily people who would ever interact with one another. Right. And it's also, we've got, like, you know, like the dregs. Like, there's little factions. It's like, the dregs are kind of like this bandit culture of people. And then there's the advisory. They're like the the, like the, the a community of people that, that are, are re trying really hard to establish law and order and working with sanction in order to... Uh, to, to, to make something like a place that's worth living in in spite of it being such a hard place. Yeah. And then we have Port Ambition, which yeah. is kind it's of like... A, a junkyard world, right? Yeah, it's like an... <laughs> well, it's kind of like a junkyard world. It's kind of like an airport. Like, mm -hmm. the idea, the original idea I had for it was like, it was effectively an airport. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's just kind of been left derelict and in the process... There's like cargo and flotsam and and there's all kinds of weird stuff like there's these things called gargants or like these giant animals that are just meant to like pick up luggage like and cargo and move them off. Well, they don't have a they don't have a purpose anymore, right? So they're just kind of like wandering around moving heavy things in in the in the mud because that's what they're engineered to do. So yeah, and then we have the, my favorite thing, the chitterwigs. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Yeah. Let's let's leave the Chitterwigs for them to discover on their own. <laughs> they have two. They have two cards. So yeah. The Chitterwigs are just one of the many like really bizarre things you find in these worlds, and uh, the the a lot of this came from like the, the concepts and the ideas came from this huge document that Travis sent me when we first started working on the project. And this is we were like we were just thinking about it. We we like we had been watching the Mandalorian at the time. It was like it was it was the hotness, you know. And uh, we were like, well, you know, let's do something in the sci-fi western kind of space. And, uh, and then, like, two days later, he has this massive document. It just has all these concepts, all these worlds, all these factions and characters. And it's like, we haven't really departed very much from it. Like, it was pretty much, like, one shot, and I read it, and I was like, oh, cool. yeah, this is it. So, like, where, where did all this, where did it come from? Like, what were those two days like? Because I never really asked you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, like, one of my very favorite things to do is world building. Like, yeah. and, and, and so this is, like, again, like... It's, it's kind of easy to come up with a concept. It's harder to fill in the blanks, right? So, like, you, you kind of took this suggestions of this, of this world and you, and you ran with it and you, and you populated with people and things and, and situations. Um, I, I mean, like, I, I looked at a lot of... Uh, so, like, at the time, I was, like, really interested in fungus. <laughs> so, like, mycelial <laughs> yeah, networks too. and stuff. So, like, that, that was this over here. I am perpetually obsessed with Mad Max, as you know, from working on Renation with me. Um, like, I like this idea of just, like, hard times. Um, uh, and then this was, like, we just needed a third planet, and I was like, what if there was, like, an airport planet? Yeah. Like, just an airport planet. Like, it was the place that was, like, the easiest place to land, and they're just like, yeah, this is just, like, an airport. Like, and that's it. And then they leave, and they're like, okay, well, the people are, like, living in an airport. Right. It's so, where you go to get $7 frozen yogurt. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the airport planet. Yeah. Or, or bull bar refreshment was. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so I, I mean, like, in terms of, like, the stuff that's populated in there, there's lots of little love letters. You know, like, so in front of me is a character named Mandarax. Uh, my he's he's a robot uh, in my favorite um, or a pod we call it in the game. Mm. Uh, my my very favorite Kurt Vonnegut novel is is one called Galapagos, mm. and there is like this machine in it called the Mandarax. It's like this like probability calculating translating machine, and it's spelled differently. But like I like to do little things like that. Like there's in this encounter deck, there's a little guy named uh, Gavel. Like all of the sanction guys, like they're they're instead of officer, they're called gavels. You know, like like a judge uses. Uh, and there's a guy called Gavel PKD, PKD for Philip K. Dick, like who I'm obsessed hey, with. I didn't, Co- I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't realize that was. Right. You didn't realize that. No. Cousin Ubik. Ubik is the name of a, a is a, there's a, a weird NPC called Cousin Ubik. Like there's Philip K. Dick once again. So there's lots of like little love letters in here, and I could just like navel gaze forever and go on about all the like weird stuff. You know, we have like a a, a lady who's got a pet hyena who's also her romantic partner who's been trapped in this, and she's coming from like a dying world she's coming to like a dying timeline and this is the 11th time she's failed there, there's all kinds of crazy stuff but those are characters not worlds yeah we're gonna get to that oh later. my gosh it's gonna be a whole other video we're doing a series <laughs> it's a serious yeah. series. There, so, there are there are a lot of love letters in this and like a, that's that's kind of part of the uh, the writing and stuff like that was uh, that was me as well like um the uh, my favorite love letter that I, I kind of snuck in here and it's not really sneaky at all is uh, this character that Travis is talking about from a different timeline. Um, there's a, a love letter to uh, Star Trek: Next Generation's episode called Inner Light, and that's a, an episode where uh, Captain Picard he like he finds this little capsule and he gets like trapped in this uh, this little alternate world, um, and he like lives an entire life where he like has a family and everything and like you know for the rest of his life and then at the end of his life he dies and he wakes up back where he found the capsule and like it was just like this message that was intended to like to send that to him and, and Mel Cantha here that the character that has is the, the traveler um, she has like kind of one of those personalized encounters where she has kind of a similar experience and that, that for me was like always a really like emotional episode like the idea of living a whole life in a moment you know it's like it's always really gotten to me so it's like a Rick and Morty episode like yeah. that too yeah that's I didn't see that one I didn't yeah. see a lot of Rick no, oh. no, I'm being serious. Yeah. There, there literally is one of those moments. Yeah. So anyway, we got to wrap this up. This is like way too long. Yeah. So uh, uh, we need we need to talk about so inspiration. So like I've talked mm-hmm. about some of those inspirations. So like, what's a big inspiration that you kind of drew from to help populate this world with all the crazy stuff that's in it? Yeah. Cool, yeah, I mean, the there's... cool stuff. You made a lot of really cool stuff. I really I thank you for that. You too. Thank you. We should make games together or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the uh, I mean, for me, like the one of my bigger. Um, the, the things that I feel like I contributed is I really wanted to make this world like just based on that document you said everything was just so strange and so creative and I really wanted to make it feel as weird during play as it did on, on that outline right and uh, the things I drew from for there were like Farscape which is this this strange like Muppet laden uh, sci-fi show from like the uh, I guess like the late 90s early 2000s and uh, from Henson Studio and it's just like really weird strange um, so that was a, that was a big one for me you know 
What about you? What, where did you draw from? So there is an author seen. named okay. Jeff Vandermeer. Mm -hmm. he, I, some people may have seen this movie called Annihilation with Natalie Portman in it um, and Oscar Isaacs, I think he's in it. Sure. Um, the guy who plays Moon Knight. He's very and, awesome. and Well, this guy, like, this author is, like, I'm, a, I'm, like, weirdly obsessed with this author. He kind of writes this, like, biopunk, like, the new weird. He's kind of, like, people call him the, the weird Thoreau. You're so the it's, like, it's, he, he's his writing is super <laughs> weird and like he the world is almost way more important than the characters it's kind of like he kind of treats characters like they're like fleas on the back of this massive beast and the the massive beast is the world so a big big portion of uh this this fungal unknown planet which i know you know like you're there it's just like it feels like of any of the three places, this place is where the most impossibly strange things happen. Oh, like yeah. temp temporal, spatial, like hiccups where like you go back and, re and mm -hmm. you re you relive to the the start of the game just out of nowhere. Um, uh, come from Jeff Vandermeer. Mm -hmm. um, this is and, a bizarre world. Like there's strange stuff happening. Sure, sure. But like his whole thing is like he writes it through the lens of like nature is this powerful thing, mm -hmm. life is this powerful thing, and so he kind of writes these like lush wastelands. Mm -hmm. Like so. It's it's uh, it's it's like a post apocalypse where everything's like alive and the world's kind of taking it back and it's just kind of inhospitable to people. Yeah. Right. So like the world is great for animals and organisms, but people are kind of like nope, we're not really adapted to live in this like crazy scary place. So so like I drew a lot of inspiration from from like the the uh, South Reach trilogy and this book is called Born and this book is called Dead Astronauts. Um, a lot of little weird like love letters and I, like if you have not read this guy I really recommend it um, and then things like Dune and Mad Max and you know and Star Wars like I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan but like I think aesthetically like Star Wars is yeah. incredible like it's just yeah. the coolest looking stuff in the universe so um, yeah so I don't know that's it high five